In this question, to obtain the average of A and B, it would certainly be sufficient to learn their individual values. But since the average of A and B is half their sum, it would also be sufficient to learn the sum of the two, even if we don't learn their individual values. That's worth recognizing before we get started. Now let's turn to the statements, examining them separately first. Statement one tells us the average of these two related numbers. Algebra is on our side in this case, so let's use the average formula. The statement tells us that the sum of the two divided by two is 15. Therefore, multiplying both sides by two, we obtain the following. Collecting the two terms, five and three, and subtracting from both sides gives us a plus b equals 22. We have the sum of a and b, so we know what their average will be. It's 11. Therefore, statement one gives us sufficient information to answer the question definitively. Statement two gives us a similar statement. Using the same approach, we can write the following algebraic expression. The sum of the three numbers divided by three gives us the average, 11. Once again, we can multiply both sides, this time by three, to obtain a plus b plus 11 equals 33. The sum, once again, is 22. This statement is also sufficient. The correct answer is D. Both statements can also be evaluated purely conceptually. Statement two is simpler. If the average of three numbers is 11 and one of them is 11, the number 11, as a member of the set, does nothing to adjust the average of the numbers in the set. It doesn't tug one way or the other way from the average. It just adds weight to the average already established by the other two numbers. It follows that the average of the other two numbers, a and b, is 11. That's statement two. Statement one allows a similar type of analysis. If one number is increased by 5 and the other is increased by 3, then the sum of them is increased by 8, or an average of 4. So the resultant average, 15, is 4 more than the average of the unaffected numbers, and that latter average must therefore be 11. That's an alternative way of thinking about it. Using this balancing approach, or a tug of war between the numbers when dealing with averages, can be a very direct way of solving questions on the GMAT. Again, the correct answer is D.